have a lot of what ifs in life. What if? What if you came home and you saw this in your driveway? How many people would say, praise the Lord? (laughs) Well, I came home about three years ago after a storm, and that's what I found in my driveway. Uh, Wind shear had come by, across Bud Lake. It went through our property, and we have 60-foot oak trees around our property. And it took the top half of the 60-foot oak trees down, and they fell all over our yard and on the cars. We lost two cars. Well, you know, I had just gotten home. I was a little afraid as I was traveling home because the wind was blowing so hard across the lake. The the lake water was blowing sideways on my car, and I could feel my car moving, and I was getting really nervous. And I just wanted to get home to Diane and Deanna, who were home. And um, as we look at this, Deanna had gotten home not too soon before this happened. Oh, my gosh, look at that car. Now, I got to be honest. I didn't show the picture because I didn't want to do that to my wife. But I got a picture. Deanna never liked that car. So I got a picture of Diane and Deanna standing there. Diane's with a sad face, and Deanna's got a big smile on her face. (laughs) Right, Deanna? (laughs) You got to see the picture. I just didn't want to embarrass my wife. Anyway, you know, my first thought when I pulled in the driveway, what if Deanna is in that car right now? The lights were blinking, and I was starting to panic. You know, as as we looked inside the car, it it, it got even more dramatic. And look at this. Boy, if my daughter had been in that car. Wow. Wow. Once I realized Deanna wasn't in the car, she was in the house with Diane and she was safe, then I began to panic saying, what if I had pulled up one minute earlier? Because it happened just 30 seconds to a minute before I got there. What if? What if? Anyone ever ask, what if? You know, it's funny because the neat thing is, I'll show you this picture, when this, this giant top of the tree came down, it missed our house by not even a foot. It would have taken out our whole front porch but it didn't. But you know what I was saying? Oh my gosh, what if it hit the porch? What if it hit Deanna? What if it hit me, (laughs) right? What ifs? We panic sometimes. We say what if all the time. You know, there's three kinds of what ifs I see in this life. There are what I call the fearful what ifs. Oh my gosh, what if that tree had hit us? Oh my gosh, what if that tree hits my car? Oh my gosh, what if I lose my job? Oh my gosh, what if that person gets mad at me? What if this happens? What if that happens? And how many people know we, we have those little times? I could have died in that accident. And then we have the fateful what ifs. The fateful what if says, what if I do something good and fate has it that person's not going to be kind to me? I get rejected for what I do. What if people come against me? What if man says all men are of evil against me? And those what ifs many times can keep us from sharing the gospel, can keep us from serving others and loving others with the love of Jesus Christ. Amen? The fearful what ifs, they cause us to worry. The fateful what ifs, they paralyze us to do what's right and good sometimes. What if I I give and I don't have enough money for this? But you know, I pray that the fearful what ifs and the fateful what ifs lead us to something even more powerful, the faithful what ifs. What are the faithful what ifs? Let me tell you what the faithful what ifs are because it's so important. What would we have done if the Lord had not been with us? That day, I looked at the car, and once I got a hold of myself and realized there was no need to panic, there was no need to worry, I began to thank God to say, Lord, if you hadn't been with us, what would have happened to my daughter? Lord, if you hadn't been with us, what would have happened to me? Lord, if you hadn't been with us, what would have happened to my house or my wife? You know, every time there's a big storm, we had a big tree come down at Sandy. The following year, a giant branch came down, took out my front yard. And now every time we have a storm, we're all like, oh, my God, please. <laughs> you know? But why, I can't say, what if the branch falls? I have to say, Lord, what if you weren't with me? See, the faithful what ifs acknowledge God's strength. They acknowledge God's power. They acknowledge his goodness and what he has done in our lives. And today, as we share this message with you from Psalm 124, I pray that your fearful what ifs and your faithful what ifs will turn into faithful what ifs. Amen? That we will not be paralyzed by the things that happen to us, but that we will be energized in our faith. And this morning, as, as we look at this scripture, and I may need you to move that, Ed. It's not seeming to move forward for me this morning. And if we could advance that slide. What if King David 
wrote this parable, a parable to me, this, this psalm. I'll read it with you right now. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side. How many would say amen to that? Amen. Now he's so excited. Look what he says. Now let Israel say. So let all of us say it together. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side. You see, David is passionate about what he's saying right now. It was God who was on my side. It was God who was behind me. It's God who went before me. It's God who's given me blessings and protected me. How about you? Has he protected you? Has he blessed you? See, God is not on my side because I'm righteous. God is on my side because he loves me and he's gracious and he wants to grow me. Amen? Amen. I, I want you to understand that. God's not on our side because we're on the right side of the aisle. God's not on our side because we're on the right side of, 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 the, of the argument. God is on your side because he loves you as his creation. He redeemed you with the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen? You are walking in his grace. You, he is on your side. Abraham Lincoln said, the question is not if God is on our side. Are we on God's side? Amen? Nevertheless, look what David says. If it had not been for the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. I know we've covered this ground, but certain things I'll just keep reiterating and reiterating because I want to get it in our hearts. That word there for Lord is yud Hey vuv Hey. You see up there in the Hebrew. It's the word we have as Yahweh. Some say Jehovah. It was the name that the Hebrews could not even say. It had no vowels to it. And it comes from this derivative that means will come to pass. And so Yahweh is the one whose word and promises will come to pass. Lord, if it had not been for your promises and you on my side, where would I have been? The first thing that we understand about our God is we don't hope that he's gracious. We don't hope that he's faithful. We don't hope that he's powerful. He has made promises to you and me. And how many people know he says, I'll bless those that bless you, Abraham, and I'll curse those that curse you. And in you, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. This is the God of promise whose new words come to pass. Amen? Amen. That's the God who's on your side. That's the God who's going to finish what he started in you. You see, because the what ifs of life will affect how we think and will affect our conduct towards others. The what ifs of life will affect us. In fact, look what Hebrews 13, 5 says here. Let your, what's that word say? Conduct, that's our behavior, right? Be without what? Covetousness, meaning wanting what someone else has. Be, what's that next word? Content. How many people hate that word? With such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. You see, this is important to understand that God is with us. He keeps his promises. And all his promises have been kept in Jesus Christ. Amen? In fact, how many people know that the name Jesus comes from the name Joshua? The Hebrew name for Jesus is Joshua. We, we use the Greek rendering. And it comes from two words. Jehoshia. Hoshia means salvation. Je is short for Jehovah or Jehovah saves. Every time you call on the name of Jesus in faith, you are saying Jehovah saves. Isn't that powerful? Isn't it marvelous? When you call on the name of Jesus, you are calling on Jehovah's salvation. You see, the great and marvelous God of the universe loves you. He's made promises for you, and he will keep you, and he keeps them in his son. You see, the problem is this. If we're always thinking about what's going to go wrong, or who's going to cheat us, or who's going to deceive us, we're going to look at the world differently. Get this. You see, if people have what we don't have and we don't trust in God, we're going to say, God, you're unfair. They have something I, I want. And guess what? You will sin to get it. How many people know the thought of covetousness is a sin? Amen? And when we act on it, we sin against others, don't we? Another word there, content. How many people say, I want to live Bruce Gallagher's life? How many people want to say, I want to live John's life? Or maybe Rudy's life? How many people know that? <laughs> I was hoping you did that, Rudy. How many people would say, you don't want to live my life? Now, listen to me. There was a movie years ago, and this is what it was called, The Grass Grows Greener Over the Septic Tank. 
Amen? The grass always grows greener over the septic tank. And just because the grass looks a little greener in someone else's life doesn't mean they have it easier or better than you. I remember years ago, my father went in for open heart surgery. He had an aortic aneurysm. But before they could do the aortic aneurysm, they had to give him a quadruple bypass. And he was feeling sorry for himself, I have to admit, at that time. And we were in the hospital. And when they were doing his final test, and they came and they said, Reverend Jones, your heart is 97% blocked. We need to do a quadruple bypass. And at the same time he was getting his news, the man in the bed next door was getting wonderful news. His doctor says, John, we have incredible news for you. Your heart is clear. We believe that you're going to be clear for years to come. And I'll never forget my father in that hospital bed goes, I wish I was him. No sooner does that roll off my father's lips and the doctor says, no one would ever believe you had a heart transplant a year ago. You see, you may think that someone's got it better, but you don't know what they've been through. Amen? Amen. Now listen to me, we're not going to have a scar contest today, a physical scar contest or spiritual scar contest of who's had it worse. Guess what? It's all under the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. But I want you to know today that whatever assignment, whatever lot God has given to you, don't lament over it. Don't be covetousness for what someone else has. Be content with what God has for you because God has a perfect prescription for you in your life. Yahweh, the God of promise, what he said he would do for you, he will fulfill it. Amen. Amen. I used to think when I was younger that God liked everyone but me. Did anyone have that problem? He seemed to do miracles for other people but me. And he seemed to have, other people seemed to have his favor but me. And other people seemed to get more excited than I did. And then one day, grace just had to be caught in my heart to say, no, Matt, he loves you. And I realize now he loves me. In fact, you know what he calls me? He calls me Matt. <laughs> yeah? He loves you. Settle the issue. You see... We have to ask the same what ifs that David asked. Not what if this happens to me? Not what if this person cheats me? Not what if this goes wrong? But to say, what if God was not with me? What if God was not on my side? This morning, I want you to know the great God of the universe who's made promises to his people. He made promises to Adam. He made promises to Abraham. He made promises to Moses. He made promises to David. And those promises are for you and for me. Amen? We can rely on his promises. Yahweh, the great promiser, says my words will come to pass in your life. As we move on in this, uh, this uh, presentation today, the faithful what-ifs will carry you through the times when you begin to feel overwhelmed. Anyone here ever get overwhelmed sometimes? I do. I'd like to tell you I get overwhelmed in a good way. Sometimes I do, but sometimes I get overwhelmed in a bad way. Hey, let's read the scripture together. When men rose up against us, then they would have swallowed us alive. When their wrath was kindled against us, then the waters would have overwhelmed us. The stream would have gone over our soul. Then the swollen waters would have gone over our soul. Get this, he talks about his soul becoming overwhelmed by evil men. Overwhelmed by the waters. Waters represent the troubles of life. That troubles would have overwhelmed me if God had not been with me. You see, when you're starting to feel overwhelmed, you're starting to believe you're going to get overwhelmed, turn your fearful what ifs into faithful what ifs. What if this paycheck doesn't last the week? What if the doctor gives me a bad uh, uh, prognosis? What if this doesn't work out? What if my timing's not right over here? What if, what if, what if? And let the Holy Spirit stop you and say, no, instead of speaking words of death, start to speak words of life, amen? Instead of looking at the mountain, look above the mountain, amen? And say, Lord, what if you were not by my side? Lord, I don't know how, but you're going to carry me through this situation, amen? As he's the God of promise. I want you to see what it says in Isaiah 43, 1 and 2. Thus says the Lord, who what? Created you. Fear not, for what? I have what? Redeemed you. I have called you by your name. I told you, he calls me Matt. You are mine. I want to stop there for a moment. The God who created you, the God who redeemed you, the God who calls you by name, the God who has his name written on your heart and your soul, if he did all these things for you, is he going to drop you in this situation right now? If he died on the cross and rose again, 
Is he going to stop his forgiveness in your life? If he rose from the grave, is he not going to give you a future hope? Is, is he going to let us up just to let us back down? This God cares. He continues to care and he continues to work on our behalf. Amen. Look what he goes on to say here in Isaiah. When you pass through the waters, very similar. I will be with you. Think about a, a rushing river that you have to cross. And as you go, you're going deeper and deeper and you're feeling the pull of this river. And you say, I'm going to get caught up. I'm going to get overwhelmed. I'm going to drown. And God says, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. None of it, the waters may get high. The waters may get fierce. But God is not going to allow your soul to drown. Amen? He goes on to say this. When you walk through what? The fire, you shall not be burned, nor the flame scorch you. Now, sometimes it's going to get a little hot in the kitchen. Amen? But listen to me. Although it gets hot in the kitchen, God says your, your soul will not be scorched, burned to a crisp. See, God has promised for each and every one of us. Now, I want to say something to you here that's really important. God does not keep us from all evil, but God does redeem us from all evil. Did you hear what I just said? Yes. Now, the reason I say that, how many people, bad things have happened to you, right? Bad things have happened to you. But how many can say, but God's redeemed me from all of them? Amen? Amen. You see, it's one of these things that I think about sometimes. There was this commercial was on TV a few years ago, and I can't find it. I've always wanted to show it to you. And it's, it's a tire commercial. And this guy is driving on Big Sur there in California. Now, as he's driving down Big Sur in his car, he's got like four guardian angels flying next to him. And he goes and he hits a pothole, and the guardian angel flies under the car, goes around the tire, brrr, like that, and the guy doesn't know anything, and you see the guardian angel all mangled up. And then he drives down the road a little bit more, and he comes near the cliff, and his car almost goes off the cliff, and the guardian angel goes into the car, boom, hits it back on the road, and the guy does, has, knows nothing about it. And at the end of the commercial, you see the guy standing there with a big smile on his face, and his guardian angel, like their teeth are knocked out, black eyes, they're all beat up, you know? He's got no idea what they did for him. You see, when God keeps us from evil, which he does, amen, we may not even know what he has kept us from. We may not even know the things that he saved our soul from, that he saved our bodies from, that he saved our emotions from. You see, sometimes when we've experienced the effects of evil in our lives, then we realize what he's redeemed us from. Now, I believe he has kept me from more than he's redeemed me from. It's just that I can't see it because it's a different future I've been given through his redemption. Amen? And I want you to know when God redeems us from a horrible situation, it's so that we can see his mighty power, that we can see his grace for us, that we can see his promises being fulfilled. Rudy, I know you wanted to share your testimony. Do you mind if I just share real quick what happened? Rudy went in for some neck surgery, and you've been over 10 years with this problem with your neck, and he had pain in his neck. And a few months ago, he went in for the neck surgery, and when he comes out, the doctor says, Rudy, I'm sorry, there was nothing I could do, right? There was nothing he could do. He said, I just cleaned up a little bit. Unfortunately, the way everything was constructed, I could do nothing. Well, Rudy, what's happened since that surgery? Isn't that cool? The doctor said the Lord fused his, his neck for him. You see, I, I want you to see this because, you see, if, if Rudy had not gone through what he went through, he would have never known that healing power of God. Amen? Now, I believe he, he keeps us from more than we could ever imagine, but the things he does not keep us from, he will redeem us from. Amen? So when the waters come up to here, and they come up to here, and they come up to here, all of us begin to feel fearful. But remember, Lord, what you don't keep me from, you redeem me from. No matter how high this water comes, Lord God, I'm not going to drown. Amen? No matter how hot this flame gets, Lord God, you're not going to allow my spirit and my soul to be burned to cinders. Jesus, you will preserve me. Our God is a deliverer. Our God is a redeemer. And our God is a healer. Amen? When situations begin to overwhelm you, remember that our God, he's there when the waters get high. Amen? Amen. You know, not only is he there when we get overwhelmed 
And do we have to have the faithful what ifs? Lord, what if you were not here with me in this stream right now? Lord, what if you were not here as this water's raising up? Lord, what if you had not been with Shadrach, Meshach, and, and Barry Manilow in, in, that, in that furnace? Lord, and right now the heat's up on me right now. But Lord, just as I, they trusted you, I'm going to trust you right now. Amen. I just want to see if you're all listening, that's all. You see, not only does he help us when we feel overwhelmed, and do we have to repeat the faithful what ifs to get us through that time, but also he keeps us from being devoured. You see, when you speak the faithful what ifs, it will keep you from being devoured. Look what the scripture says. Blessed be the Lord who has not given us as prey to their teeth. How many people say, ooh, huh? right? Reminds me of putty tat and tweety, right? <laughs> Tore to putty tat, right? You see, many times we're afraid that we're gonna get eaten up, devoured, and spit out. See, it's one thing to be overwhelmed, and it's another thing to be completely destroyed. How many people say, I, I don't want to become food for my enemy? Amen? You know, Jesus told us this, and, and even in 1 Peter, I want you to see what it says here. It says, be sober and vigilant. You guys know the scripture. Because your adversary, the devil, walks like a, a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. How many people know the enemy's going to try to devour you? He's going to try to clamp down on you with his teeth, and he's going to try to make you food for himself. How does he make people food for himself? By turning people's hearts against God? By destroying people's faith? By physically, emotionally, and spiritually even bringing death to someone, even prematurely? Amen? Remember we said, the devil is a liar. In fact, Jesus said this, he's the father of lies, amen? And when he speaks, he speaks from his own lying resources, amen? amen? Now, this is important. But Jesus said, but I came to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. The lie of the enemy is you have no future, you have no hope. Do not let that lie devour you. Don't let it devour you. Look at what it says here, resist him. Don't believe his lies. Stand steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. How many people have never had a problem in this room? Don't raise your hand. If you did, I think all of us are going to be ready to take one good swipe at you. We all were, okay? And in a minute. May the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect establish, strengthen, and settle you. You know what that scripture tells me? Sometimes God's going to allow certain things to come against me. But even when I suffer from those things, what is God's plan? His plan is to perfect me through it. His plan is to establish me through it. His plan, what is it? It's to strengthen me through it. It's to settle my faith in him. I want you to know today that when you begin to go through those waters and you start to feel overwhelmed, begin the faithful what ifs. Lord, what if you were not in these waters with me right now? Lord, if you hadn't been with the waters with me in the past, Lord, I wouldn't have made it. And Lord, I know I'm going to make it today because you were with me yesterday. Lord, when I feel like I'm going to be devoured by the enemy, Lord God, I'm going to be destroyed. I'm going to be eaten up. I'm going to be his food. But Lord, I won't because I remember when you were with me in the past. What if you hadn't been with me? Oh, Lord, I know you are with me now. The faithful what ifs will bring you through every vicissitude of life. Amen? Amen? I want you to see this next thing because this is incredible as we see the scripture today. Not only will the faithful what ifs get you through being overwhelmed, not will the, only the faithful what ifs get you through being devoured, but also the faithful what ifs will keep you from being deceived. Anyone here, I, I, I want to stop on this for a moment. Anyone here have trust problems with things and people in this world? Thank you, okay. If you didn't raise your hand, I forgive you already for lying. <laughs> you see, we all have trust issues. You know why? People let us down. Guess what? It doesn't just stop with people. Your family sometimes will let you down. My wife's let me down, I've let her down. 
And remember, your undertaker is the last person who will ever let you down. Amen? I want you to understand that. But nevertheless, sometimes we stop trusting people because we're afraid we're going to get let down or we're going to be deceived. Read this. Look at this. It says here. Our soul, this is beautiful, doesn't say will, doesn't say might. Our soul has escaped as a bird from the snare of the fowler. The snare is what? Broken. And we have escaped. Now listen to me. The enemy will always try to set a trap for you. How many people know that? He'll do it through bad things to make you not trust in others or trust in God. And he'll do it through things that look good and seduce us through good things to fool us to think that something's good for us that's actually bad for us. Amen? In fact, look at the scripture. This is the story of the parable of the seeds. How many the sower of the seeds? Remember this parable? And this one spot here really intrigues me when I see this. It says, now he who received the seed among the thorns is he who hears the word. Look at this. And the cares of this world, those are worries, right? The cares of this world, and get this, and the deceitfulness of riches, what is that? Those are the seductions of the world. Choke the word, and he becomes what? unfruitful. Now, if we can catch this, because this is so important for each and every one of us, the enemy will try to deceive us with lies through fear and through care and anxiety. When you are sick, or maybe you're just downright sick and tired, the enemy is going to use that to put negative thoughts against others in your head. Did you hear what I just said? And many times, I, I, I can't trust this person. I can't trust this person. In fact, I'm not going to go to this church because I can't trust. In fact, I'm just going to watch someone on TV now because I can't trust any church. I'm not going to watch anyone on TV anymore. I'm just going to go and worship in my own little closet because I can't trust the guy on TV anymore. Guess what? You've allowed the enemy to deceive you that you can trust no one. Now, this is important. Catch this with me. If everyone will let you down or has the potential of letting you down, then who do you trust? Him. Him. See, you may not be able to trust your children that they're going to make the right decision all the time, but guess what? You can perfectly trust God that he's going to protect them and bring them through that. Maybe you've gone through infidelity in your marriage. And you say, I don't know if I can trust my mate. You can trust God for your mate. Is he powerful? Is he great? Does he fulfill his promises? You may not be able to trust that someone's going to turn their heart to Jesus Christ, but you can trust in the fact that his Holy Spirit is pressing in on their soul. And if anyone can save them, God can. Amen? Amen? We've got to be careful. We get so negative. We get so negative about the world and people around us. And we even tell other Christians, you're so naive. No, 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 listen to me. When you think positive, you're not being naive. You're trusting in God. And if you want to speak negative to people around you, you can do that, but all you're showing is your own lack of faith. Now, I, I, I don't mean to beat anyone up today, but it's so important. How anyone, if you ever, I've gotten stuck in a negative mode. How about you? Right? And I've got to say, God, no, I need to trust you. The plans of man cannot compare with your promises. Now, this is really important because as we go through this, we have to realize that God is there for us in all that we do. He's there. And the enemy will try to deceive you sometimes. Do you believe that? The enemy will try to deceive you. He'll try to deceive you through others. But look what it says here. He'll allow you to escape the trap. Now, I know a lot of Christians, and I hope I don't step on any toes, but I just want to speak some truth to you today. I know a lot of Christians who are conspiracy theorists. Now, don't take me wrong. Things aren't always as they appear. I get that. And there are, there are evil presences and things lurking under the surface in communities and in governments and world governments. I get that. But you know what God says? Do not call conspiracy things that I have control over. And many times when we get into the conspiracy, you know what happened? We start to worry about this. We start to worry about that. And I've noticed most conspiracy theorists trust no one and they're negative about the kingdom of God. You see, they've allowed the enemy to overwhelm their soul. Be careful about that. The enemy will deceive us through the cares of this world, but God will always give an escape. Scripture says no temptation has overcome you 
such as common to man. But the, what's the rest of that say? But God will give us a means of escape. Even when you fear fearful, know that God will give you an escape in that situation. Not only is it through the cares of this life, but we said also the seductions of this life. When we start to think that money is our answer. I got, I got to work every Sunday now. I got to work every Wednesday night. I know, Pastor, you have to understand I can't come to church. Listen to me. Who are you trusting in? The money or are you trusting in God? As far as I know, God is the source of all resource. Amen? Amen. I, I got to tell you a story. This week, there, there, was a, there was a ministry that we needed to give to, and I had been putting it off for a couple of weeks, and I wanted to do it, but I, I, just, I, just, I just couldn't. I couldn't do it. And this week, I just finally looked at Jen and said, we're just going to give the money to the, to the ministry. And I said, okay, Lord. And then last, what happened was we had so much more come in than, than what we had to take out that we were able to give that ministry with no problem whatsoever. See, God will bless our determinations too sometimes, amen? I just want to share that with you because sometimes we, we can get caught up in all the seductions of life. Some of us think that alcohol somehow or another is going to make us temporarily feel better or drugs will temporarily make us feel better or other relationships outside the marriage will somehow make us feel better. There are all kinds of things, money and jobs and all these things that we begin to rely on for somehow they're going to make our life better. But when we realize when they have drained us of everything that we have and we learn how to hate those things, that's when we realize God you're the only one who can redeem me. Amen? See, the only way we can learn to hate our sin sometimes is to feel the sting of it. Amen? See, he may not keep us from all evil, but he will redeem us from all evil. Amen? Thank you, Jesus, for being our redeemer. Lord, so many of us, Lord, we are afraid we're going to get overwhelmed, Lord God. So many of us are afraid we're going to get devoured by this world. So many of us, Lord God, get paralyzed and we don't trust others. We're so afraid of being deceived and taken advantage of. Yet, Jesus, we know, Lord God, that our help comes from you. Amen? I want you to see as this psalm ends, I want you to see how it ends. Our help is in the name of who? The Lord. Our help, say it with me, our help is in the name of the Lord. In fact, make it personal. My help is in the name of my Lord, amen, who made heaven and earth. We said Lord means that God keeps his word. And think about this. If he made heaven and earth, what is more powerful than him? Nothing. There is no person, there is no organization, there is no government, there is no army that is more powerful than he is, amen? There is no spiritual entity, the devil nor his demons that are more powerful than him, the one who created the heaven and the earth. And so when God has made a promise to you, one, we know he keeps his promises, and two, he's the most powerful entity in the universe to make sure that he follows through on his promises for you. The next time you begin to worry and say, I'm going to get overcome. Next time you begin to worry and the fearful what ifs start coming out and you say to yourself, I'm, I'm going to get devoured on this thing. Next time the fearful what ifs come to you and you start to say to yourself, I, I, I can't move out. I, I, someone's going to try to deceive me. There's going to be a trap here somewhere and I, I can't trust right now. I just want to ask you right now to ask the Holy Spirit to remind you of the faithful what ifs. Oh, Jesus, right now, replace the fearful what-ifs with the faithful what-ifs. Lord, help us to take our eyes off the mountain and put our eyes on you. Lord, help us to take our mind off the valley and put our eyes on you. Lord, help us to take our eyes off the problem and put our eyes on you, Lord God. Oh, Jesus, what if you had not been walking by our side? Where would we be?